You're listening to Templin Institute Radio with the reminder, avoid the Noid.
Hello, and welcome back to the Orion Arm. I am Mark, the man behind the curtain, and tonight we are continuing to build the Dawn of Victory star map for our ongoing world building project. Now, if this is your first time watching these streams, they tend to be a bit chaotic. I think they're a mix of uh, work sessions, world building discussions, and general confusion, with a healthy dose of me trying to figure out how Adobe Illustrator works. So, I would say this is the kind of uh, stream where it's appropriate to. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to watch the whole thing. You can you can tune in and out, see how progress is shaping up, rather than watching me, you know, debate which pixel a star it needs to be on. But before we can get into that, let's uh, maybe do some quick housekeeping. So, as said, world building stream, going over the whole uh, construction of this thing. I am working in conjunction with the amazing artist Tim Barton, who is uh, responsible for this amazing backdrop here. And the good news is uh, we've had a map update uh, since last stream. The bad news is most of the update uh, was on stuff currently blacked off, but there's a few changes I can show off. So let's uh, bring up the old work screen, shall we? All right, here we go. So what has changed since last time? That's actually a good question. Well, actually, one thing I want to highlight right away is uh, the man himself, Tim Barton, sometimes uh, watches these streams. I don't know if he can make today, we're at a bit of a later time. But if he is in chat, he might be kind of painting along uh, as we go. Last time, uh, we were placing down star systems and we decided to name this one Ararat. And I offhandedly said, you should add someone looks like Mount Ararat there, Tim. And he did, there it is. And I, I think it actually works incredibly well. You can see the, the difference here. So we got Mount Ararat. All right, what else has changed? I'm paranoid I'm gonna accidentally remove the black screen and reveal everything. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, big one up here. Uh, we're calling this area the Vale of Lyra. It's where Vega, both sides of it is. It used to have this kind of giant, uh, kind of V-shaped uh, arm coming out. I thought it was a bit much for this section. I wanna keep the, uh, the local cluster area kind of open looking. And for whatever reason, this thing just wasn't vibing. So, oh, and I guess I should say, uh, full disclosure, let's uh, quickly name this. Not ready to reveal it quite yet. I think we got a bit more work, but uh, technically this V-shaped thing was supposed to be the uh, Tannhauser Gate. Science fiction fans will of course know that any science fiction setting is uh, required by law to have an anomaly or something called the Tannhauser Gate. We're still working on ours, not ready to be revealed yet. But again, here is the the difference. And man, I love these, I don't know what you call them, like nebula spiffs, whatever these things are, nebula th things that, uh, that Tim adds. So very, very cool. Also, a bit more uh, distinction for uh, both sides of Vega going on in the background now, which I think is kind of cool. There's a risk of making this like too cartoony where it's like, oh, they just happen to all settle in the different colored sides of the nebula, but whatever, I think it works in this case. It's pretty subtle still. What else has changed? Oh yes, uh, Italy. Italy uh, is over here. Originally the plan was uh, they had this kind of golden nebula thing here, but uh, a bit too distracting. I think I, we want to keep the, the shapes of these arms like kinda conservative, so that way when you get the, the crazy ones like Amazonia and the Indian Arm and the Well of Embers, they really stand out. So if every nebula looks too cool, then uh, I don't know, not a fan of that. But I'm liking this, especially, I'm liking this thing here, because it kinda looks like a bird. And even though I'm against birds on flags, we can make an exception for the Romans, because they were kinda all about that thing. Okay, what else, what else, what else? Um, let's see. Those might actually be all the big changes that showed up on the map right here, or at least the visible part of the map. Oh wait, no, we got some more stuff going on over here. So, let's bring back the star systems. This is probably where uh, New London and the rest of the British Empire is gonna end up. New London, by the way, temporary name, so don't get mad at me over that one. But uh, a lot of new details on this weird kind of nebula thing going around here that I really, really like. And I don't know if I can find a reference photo, maybe I should have had this ready to go, but 
I actually haven't asked him about this yet, but a, a while ago, maybe a few weeks now, they released this new um, artist's uh, interpretation of what a neutron star looks like. And I swear Tim saw that same article, because this looks uh, very similar. I, of course, can't find the image of that neutron star that was just released, but you'll just have to take my uh, word for it. All right, so anything else to go over before we jump in? Uh, no, I guess not. I think uh, that's all the big changes, at least the ones that you can see. All right, so I'm just going to dive in. The plan for the stream, I think, is to finish up the Dewanga Deeps uh, and get some feedback on, on what's going on here, and I'll talk more about that in a second. But uh, general idea, we'll finish up this whole square and then maybe start thinking about moving closer to America or Italy or the Vale of Lyra next stream. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's all, uh, all this stuff to go over here. Except for the important stuff. So, if you would like to contribute names to this project, names for star systems, names for regions, names for whatever else, we do have a Google Doc set up where we are recording suggestions as well as recording uh, all the stars currently on the map. Hopefully a link to that uh, just popped up in chat. So if you want to suggest ideas, um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory how to do that. God willing. Different tabs at the bottom for different sections. We have uh, a team of uh, folks now who are actually going through this document and uh, cleaning it up, keeping it organized. So thanks to them. But I feel like I'm talking too much. Let's just uh, let's get going. Although to get going, I got to talk even more. So if you hate my voice, bad stream. Bad stream to be watching. So, part of the design of this map, as we said initially, is not just telling you how to get to Alpha Centauri to Juno. That's a big part of it, but we also want this map to have kind of a vibe or a feel or a theme to it, with different regions having different vibes, themes, feelings, whatever. In the case of the local cluster, this is kind of our safe zone. In the terms of a, an MMO, this would be like the starting area, I guess. I don't know. But then you're doing get deeps, Kind of the first kind of rough part of the neighborhood. You know how in Star Wars, if you'll forgive me for going on a tangent here, like, uh, you got, like, the core worlds are in the middle, and then, like, outside of that, you got the, um, I don't actually know what the names are in, in Star Wars. How do I draw? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I swear to God I'm gonna do this. Because I have a point to make, damn it. Why, why can't I draw? I should be able to draw, right? God damn you, Illustrator. Nothing makes sense. Oh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> All right. So in Star Wars, you got, like, the core worlds, and then you got, like, the colonies, right? With my perfect writing. And then, like, way on the outside, you got the uh, outer rim territories. And Star Wars kind of treats it as if, like... These are the most safe. This is where things are kind of rough. And then the Outer Rim is like where all the, the crazy frontier stuff happens, which I guess kind of makes sense. But it also infers that like expansion into the galaxy was happening in this like perfectly symmetrical kind of weird radius kind of thing, which uh, I'm not a big fan of. I don't think uh, civilization would actually develop this way where all the criminals are out on the edge. So uh, in Donna Victory, the idea is that we have these patches of what might be called the frontier all throughout the Orion Arm. So even though we're right next to Earth, you're never too far away from uh, some shit going down. And the Dewanga Deeps are, are kind of the first one of those. So, yeah, like a cool kind of pirate zone, like a smuggling area. Like if you want to get from the New Canaan, New Canaan Corridor to the Encruza Hilda subcluster, like maybe you can go through the deeps, navigate some, some pathways that most people don't use. That kind of stuff. So that that's the plan. But I've talked enough. Let's start uh, adding star systems. And now there's a balancing act here, it seems to me. And I guess one thing I should mention, I will do my best to, to answer questions, but uh, I tend to let those derail the stream. So, I don't know, every 20, 30 minutes I'll, I'll take a break, answer whatever questions are, are popping up in chat, and uh, prioritize Super Chats first is the plan. All right, so I don't want to overdo this because if there's too many star systems in the deeps, then it's going to feel not really like the frontier. It's going to feel like any other part of the arm. So the idea is we'll just have these kind of scattered clusters 
connected by weaker strings or potentially a few stronger strings just to keep transportation viable. And I, I kind of like the idea that the, the Golden Horn is like a gateway into the deeps. Like if you're a, a freelancer smuggler captain and you want to get to uh, the new Canaan Corridor but you don't want to have to deal with uh, the Turkish government, go into the Golden Horn, get out here somehow, make your way through the deeps, bypass it entirely. It is kind of the thinking. And my new strategy I figured out is clusters of three look good on this map. Don't know why. And we need a way to get to there, to there. Now one thing I was kind of thinking about is uh, we distinguish strong strings and weak strings by whether they're, uh, what do you call this, slashes or not. And I'm thinking I might want to change this up a bit and have, like maybe there's a particularly like strong cosmic string uh, further out. So like just because these strings are weaker, it doesn't mean uh, every string is weaker and like maybe you can have like a normal one. That's not normal at all. No dash lines. There we go. Yeah, something like this. The idea being that, like, if you can make it into this kind of rougher area, then all of a sudden you've got a really strong string. So, I don't know, connections like that is, is the idea. Because right now, it's either strong or weak, and never the two shall meet, more or less. But let's keep putting down independent star systems. I kinda like covering up uh, particularly big looking stars. I don't know if that's gonna annoy Tim or not. I feel like I mention that every time. So I want to work on the Golden Horn path. Maybe maybe Sparrow is the entrance to the to the deeps. Fitting with the the Pirates of the Caribbean theme we got going on there. Come on, Illustrator, work with me here. You're embarrassing me in front of everyone. Yeah, yeah, something like this. We're getting close. I don't quite hate this yet. What about if I move this down? Like so. Yes. So, the idea is, if you can make it into the Golden Horn, you get to Sparrow and maybe one other planet, all of a sudden, you've got access to this much stronger string that can bring you way closer into the deeps. And now, you're living large. You're mining asteroids. You're fighting off mercenaries. Is that good? I don't know if I, I think I broke something. Why why is the stroke acting like that? Come on, illustrator. Aha, okay, there we go. I don't want to start up these giant jagged uh, things here. And also, thank you very much to everyone uh with the questions and super chats. We'll be getting to those uh ASAP, but I don't want to get distracted from this absolutely unstoppable 
brainstorm that's going on right now. As I delete my latest progress, because I didn't like it. <laughs> Alright, so this cluster has a few weaker strings because no government wants to come in here and map them out. There's no money in it. So it's up to freelancers and whoever else to figure this stuff out. Why does it look so bad? Okay, I'll worry about making that look better at some other... Nah, that's pretty good. Okay, and then the question is, how do you get from one end of the deeps to the other? That is the question. I think what's going to look cool anyways, and isn't that what this is all about? Is you got to go here, because these... What are, what, are, what are these called? Nebula... Sprigs? Yeah, those, they're Nebula Sprigs, that's the official term for these things. I like putting systems kind of on them. And then I guess the question is, I, I said that one of the inspirations or whatever for the Dewanga Deeps was going to be uh, the Bermuda Triangle. Do we make that official and put a giant cosmic string triangle in the middle of this? Would that look cool or dumb? Like, what if... Whoops. There was something like this. Is that... Huh. I don't love it. I think it's too big. I think this would work if it was smaller. I think that the, uh, the weaker strings need to get, like, a bit closer together. Because, like... We've said that a long cosmic string is kind of like a really big deal. Like Sigma to Draconis, like that is that is huge. Same with uh, this going on here. So to have like these giant cosmic strings maybe in the middle of nowhere, eh, I don't know. So what if we just move stuff around? What if the triangle was here? Except I am putting stuff on the wrong layers again because Illustrator is a nightmare from which there is no escape. Right thereabouts, yes. Good job, Mark. You barely lost any time at all. I say these are world-building streams, but really this is just the world's longest Illustrator tutorial. <laughs> so bam, bam, bam. Those are still pretty long. What if it was like... Actually, this place looks too cool. The, the triangle needs to be here. Or does it? I feel like I might be losing the plot here slightly. Do I know what I'm doing? Okay, maybe it's not a triangle, maybe it's just a line. Is that interesting? Like this is kind of connected here. stop these strings from getting too long. Yeah, but kind of these, like, remote 
systems just with uh, stronger strings in the middle of nowhere. That's uh, kind of an interesting idea, isn't it? Something like that. Although I am missing the, the triangle of it all. If we can get the triangle working, I'm honor bound to have a triangle here. Could that be the triangle? Relatively small. But maybe it connects the deeps. Uh... I think it's a bit too high, if anything. What if it was there? Something like this. Okay, yeah, that's kind of coming together. Uh, someone in chat there, uh, peace saying, like the L clusters from Stellaris, exactly. Except with just weaker strings instead of wormholes or L gates or whatever it is. I guess it would be L gates. Okay, I think the triangle needs to be a bit more useful. Because right now it's just like a bit of a speed boost instead of a major linking network kind of thing. Something like this, perhaps? Hmm. Sorry, I'm just kind of staring at this, uh, trying to get my bearings, but I think this works. And that's kind of comparable to the longest weak strings we have. Nope, don't like that. I think it's too long. What if we did this? Like so. Yes, yes, this is working. This is working. Okay, so there's a few different entrances into the deeps. You can either go through the Golden Horn, which is like your classic Pirates of the Caribbean zone, and then you get out into here, and then here. Or the other way to get in is through the Turkish government. Uh, they have a major stake in a bunch of uh, alien ruins going on over here, so probably going to be a more difficult option. Option number three is through the Sousa Manzakert string. You bypass the uh, the Turks, you go right into the deeps. Probably the fastest way in, actually. Or you can get in through the Encruzahilda subcluster. And no matter which way you go, you end up in the, the Golden Triangle here. Although we can't call it that because that's where all the opium in Southeast Asia comes from. So maybe we table that name. Yes, and then you once you're there, you can like kind of go wherever. I like this. This is working for me. This is working. In the uh, the Templin Institute video sometimes I, I talk about how like a world building technique or tool or 
bit of advice or, or something, is that you, you take plot points from fantasy, science fiction, whatever, and you reinterpret them uh, in the modern world. I think the most famous example of that is uh, when you were talking about the First Order, and we tried to explain how the First Order would function if it took place on Earth. So that's like one world-building tool, I guess. I think another... Oops, what do we got here? Man, I was just talking for two minutes and I completely lost my point. The first world-building tool I have is that you, you recontextualize things in real-world history. What was the second tool? I was just about to explain it. Presumably I'm using it right now. What am I doing? I don't know. We'll come back to it. All you gotta know is that I have a, a world-building technique so good that I forget what it is mid-sentence. All right, how do I add on to this? So, something like that. I see chat is providing some uh, examples of what the, uh, the triangle could be called. So, let me know. The Wanga triangle, probably a bit too boring. And actually, here's a here's a question uh, for chat. The uh, Duwanga Deeps, which I really hope I'm pronouncing right because the word doesn't look like Duwanga at all, um, was chosen. I, I wanted to give this kind of a, I don't know, like an ocean abyss kind of feel. And Duwanga is a Fiji shark god. And presumably at least someone from Fiji was uh, present in the... Uh, Evacuation flotilla is going through here, so that's how it's got its name. But I don't know, are, are, are we sold on Dewanga Deeps? Personally, it's never quite vibed with me. I got nothing against it. I'm just wondering, is there a better option? Can we use Dewanga Deeps like somewhere else? I mean, Deeps is necessary, but Dewanga? I don't know. And uh, don't tell anybody, but... Uh, the reason it's called Deeps is because in Battlefleet Gothic, in the rulebook that they put out for it, there was a place called the uh, the Hammerhead Depths, and I thought that was the coolest place uh, of all time as a kid. Damn you, Illustrator, why are you like this? I'm adding on a thing onto this. It should do it automatically. Why is it different? All right, I don't understand this program. I mean, that even looks different. What is going on? Well, maybe it looks fine. Again, these are the kind of details I need to revisit off stream. Or could I just do this? Come on, Illustrator, work with me here. Hmm. Okay, I think the Roche entrance and the, I don't know, Golden Horn entrance to the deeps need a bit more work, but I'm liking the, the Turkish ones. A Brazilian chat saying that I'm missing the K sound. Is it Dakwanga? I thought the K might have been silent. Dakwanga? Dakwanga deeps? Dakwanga? Of course, uh, if we start renaming everything I can't pronounce, then there's going to be nothing in this, on this map. I can barely say independent. All right, but hey, we've been going for about 30 minutes. Let's uh, answer some questions, shall we? I think a few super chats popped up. All right, what do we got? First, 
Uh, Yandarul Yakob, thank you very much for the super chat. Saying, as a Cajun, I gotta ask, does Acadia have anything to do with the in real life Acadians Cajuns? Merci beaucoup for the content. It's been really awesome seeing this grow. Well, thank you very much. Um, kinda, but not really. The idea behind uh, the Acadian Expanse is that it was one of these regions that was created by the Americans and the rest of the Orion Treaty Organization to kind of uh, serve as a, uh, I don't know, uh, a glorified holding pen for a bunch of refugees that uh, escaped off of Earth. So they, they tried to create this, this new country called Acadia, and they wanted to give it this fresh, kind of new world sounding name. Uh, so they called it Acadia mostly as a branding thing to attract people, but uh, not necessarily related to actual uh, Acadians or Cajuns for that matter. Not that I actually know that much about the relationship between Acadians and Cajuns. Presumably just both French speakers that ended up in North America, right? But yeah, so that, that's kind of the thinking there, is that they're trying to use these terms from history to sell people on this whole concept, and it didn't really work if you've seen our uh, Firebase Hector video. But thanks again for the super chat. Hope I kind of answered that question. Uh, Burke Barnett saying, I love the idea of Palmra. Once again, I can't pronounce anything. Being one of the major entrances to the deeps, given the historical context from Earth as a trading oasis to regional power. So, well, first, thank you very much. Uh, I agree, but I think... Where is Pel Where is it? I should know this. Right there. Oh, okay, so you're saying that... This should be one of the major entrances. So maybe it's like there instead of Ephius. Not against that. Uh, I don't want to mess around with that just yet, but I'll come back to it. Also, on the subject of Palm, Palm, whatever this is, I must really like this name because people have pointed out that there's actually three of these on the map, I think. Unless I got it confused with another name that I was repeating. Yeah, there's the other one. So there's, we got one, two, and I think there's actually a third one right there. So, yeah, we got to we got to swap some of those up. Thankfully, as mentioned, uh, we have brought on some new staff, uh, first of which was. Uh, uh, I don't know the name actually on in YouTube here, but uh, Alexandrian Codex, who's been around for a long time, is helping out with uh, some of the map names and getting everything codified, which has been very uh, helpful. Also been keeping the uh, the sheets uh, organized. Hopefully I got their name wrong. Can you imagine, right, can you imagine if it was someone else? I think so. Everyone has too many usernames these days. That's what I think. Okay, but let's make this entrance a bit more interesting. Wait, no, I was, I was saying I was gonna answer questions. What am I doing? I get so distracted. Oh my Lord. All right, so. Uh, no Stripe, thank you very much for the super chat saying, how advanced is FTL comms? If it's impossible to send anything more advanced than basic beeps or images, that makes sense that no one has tried to make it cheap enough to sell to the masses and become as rich as OTO Comcast. So the idea with um, communication in Dawn of Victory, this is one of those things that we're still kind of like thinking about. I don't want to make a blanket statement of, yes, it's a thing, no, it's not a thing, and then, you know, cause trouble down the line. But right now the idea is that uh, faster than light communication or instantaneous communication is a thing, but it's very expensive. So it's used by like megacorps to, to keep star systems kind of together. It's used by national governments. Uh, you know, you got the red phone between the Americans and well, I guess you got a bunch of red phones now, right? You probably have at least four red phones. Uh, to the various superpowers, so those would use uh, instantaneous communication. But for your average, uh, everyday citizen, it is not a thing. If you are in what's currently called Philadelphia, and you want to talk to somebody in Terra Australis, you'll have to kind of book a time. Is is the thinking. Don't ask me how it actually works, we haven't figured that out yet, but uh, hey, we'll get there. And Jacob Miller saying, I always thought it was a large swath of the depth that was not, that was, was like that, not a literal triangle. Okay, um, yeah, the idea behind the Bermuda Triangle reference was just that ships go missing here, and it's kind of like a cool piracy area. The adding the triangle, just kind of a, a nod to that, and also a way to make transit through the deeps uh, more feasible. So that, that, that's the thinking there. I wasn't going too literal on the Bermuda Triangle thing. 
And Mr. Fox saying, I love this podcast so much. My favorite stream to paint 40K to keep up the great work. Well, thank you very much. What uh, what are you painting in, in 40K? Let me know in chat. Don't feel the need to donate for that. So, all right. Uh, if you have a chat or if you have a question, let me know right now. I'll do my best to answer it uh, while I'm paying attention. And coughing a lot while hopefully muted. Sorry. All right. Uh, Dimensional Chaos asking, how does the string system works in terms of FTL? How are they made? How are they maintained? All right. So I'll do my best to uh, breeze through this as quickly as possible because it is kind of complex. But uh, strings work like so. Uh, normally, ships can move uh, in any direction. Like there's, there's no limits on how ships can move faster than light. Um, it's just when they're moving in, it's, it's very slow, this method. But when you move along a naturally occurring cosmic string, you're suddenly going much, much faster. So no cosmic string, your ship has to do like one, like a, a bunch of small jumps to make it from one star system to the other. But if there is a cosmic string, only a few jumps are necessary. Uh, jumps are instantaneous, like in Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> There's some funny notes on here. And strings uh, sometimes line up where you can like jump from here to here, all the way to here without actually needing to transit through the system, but not always. Uh, strings are naturally occurring. They're not made by anybody, but they are mapped by, by starships. So to use a string requires a bit of investment because you need to be able to understand how FTL drives can, can detect it or utilize it or something. Again, a lot of this is, is not very solidly defined. This is just the, the literal brainstorming on how FTL works uh, in the setting. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Will Philadelphia have four other systems to represent the Bose Wash metropolitan area? I am not from anywhere near Philadelphia. I have no idea what any of that means. I would love to participate in this local dialogue related to Philadelphia. Uh, so my answer is maybe. Uh, Camila Sanchez asking, any monarchist factions or nations? Yes, yes, there are. Uh, the big one, of course, being the Empire of Japan, which is somewhere around there. I forgot about them the first time someone asked me that question. And there's probably a few other monarchies throughout the sphere. But generally, uh, not a fan of monarchies, so certainly no new ones have cropped up. Nobody in the Orion Arm, upon arriving at a new star system, said to themselves, you know what we need? A king. This isn't... What's that book series? Uh, oh, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's that famous one that everyone loves. Man, the, the Royal Manticorean Navy is in it. It's called uh, The Honorverse. The Honorverse. Where they're the Royal Manticore people decide to have a king. God, I hate it. I hate it so much. But what can you do? Uh, Cameron asking, is the naval combat in DOV based on any specific historical area, era of naval combat? Uh, many sci-fi settings are based on World War II. Uh, yeah, so originally, back in um, the original version of this project that we started back as a mod in 2006, naval combat heavily based on World War II. Then I found out about the Cold War. Turns out it's way more interesting when you add missiles into the mix. So, uh, I don't know, fleet combat in Dawn of Victory, very reminiscent of Cold War era naval combat with like sci-fi stuff added to it. So you're nailing battleships from half a star system away with missiles that have, you know, 200 submunitions, and each of those submunitions has its own countermeasures, and each of those countermeasures has its own counter-countermeasures, and, and all that crazy stuff where you have runaway military budgets just designing bigger and bigger uh, weaponry. So that that's the idea, is that space combat in this is, is uh, Cold War-esque, but with uh, room for more cinematic stuff. Okay, I'll try to get some... Oh, here we go, another super chat. Thank you very much. Blue Space saying, um, Why aren't the UK or France on the Security Council despite being founding members of the League of Nations? Also, what's China doing? So, for those of you unaware, uh, Donna Victory has a wiki. The link hopefully just popped up in chat. So if you want to know about all the countries currently uh, in the Orion Arm, you can go there, hit Astropolitics, and you'll see a huge list. But that list is not finished. That list is still being updated uh, most weeks, so uh, not totally accurate 
as for why Britain and France aren't on the Security Council. Maybe they are. Again, just because it's not showing up on the wiki right now doesn't mean it's not a thing. So, uh, I don't have a great answer. Maybe I just forgot. Or maybe I still need to think about it more. But, uh, something to keep in mind. Okay. Oh, I also missed another Super Chats from Rosset saying, Beef's B5 style, only a small band can instantly talk. I am watching uh, Babylon 5 for the very first time right now. I, I kept meaning to, to start it over and over again. Finally making my way through it. I'm on season three right now. Pretty, pretty good. Okay. Uh, there was a question here I kind of liked. Uh, Frederico Pardo. I hope I pronounced your name okay. Are there going to be any merchant republics like Venice in the Middle Ages? Yes. Yes, I like the concept of the, uh, the interstellar merchant republic quite a bit. In fact, we might already have one in New Canaan, just because they control the corridor. They're a uh, pretty big trade power. Same with potentially, eh, not quite June or Vesta. Alpha Centauri may be kind of one of those, maybe if you want to shift your definition a bit, but short answer, yes. Uh, I think that's a, it's a cool concept, but of course it would need to be modernized, right? Like we can't just do like a one for one, bring Venice into space kind of thing. General Jakob saying, uh, Cajuns are the Acadians who were expelled by the British for refusing to submit to the British crown and convert from Catholic, Catholicism, Catholicism, I can't talk, to Angl Ang to the other one. <laughs> After the violent ousting, most went to Louisiana. Okay. Man, I know so little about the history of my own uh, continent, but uh, thanks for the uh, added context there. That's good to know. Also, man, British are kind of jerks, right? And I say that as a subject of them. All right. Uh, okay, I see one more here. Hey, Mark, have you still have you made a decision on the Olympics? I, I don't know what's going on with the Olympics. I don't have a, a ton of time to keep on top of the the memes that are popping up uh, on the Discord channel. All I know is that some people are very enthusiastic about the Olympics, and all I can say is that the Olympics are a thing in Dawn of Victory. But uh, that's all. That's all I got. And all right, one more time. Or right, one more question, rather. Uh, when can we start filling out the OTO area? The idea is uh, we'll finish up kind of this square here and then move on to OTO. So, I don't know, probably April, May, because I still want to, we got to do Italy. We got to do more of the Veil vale of Lyra and we got to figure out what's going on over here. But we are getting so close to like actually having this section finished and that is pretty goddamn cool. Okay. Uh, da, 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 I I feel like that's probably good enough for now. Let's get back to actually working on this sucker, shall we? So, appreciate your comments. Uh, if you have any more, uh, let me know next time we take a break or send in a super chat. Those get priority. Because what are we if not greedy capitalists? Ah, shit, we brought capitalism to space. Tim Curry is going to be pissed. So, what was I working on? Okay, entrances into the deeps. Yeah, just to make this section look kind of more interesting. We'll add... Another star lane. Okay, why didn't that work? There we go, finally. Such a weird aesthetic, just trying to make these look good. I have no idea why some placements just seem to click with me more than others, but uh, I am not going to question it. So, um... What is my objective here? I guess I just want to make, like, right now my, my problem is that these strings leading into the deeps seem a bit too long for how weak they are. Like, this is about as crazy as, I guess that's maybe not too different, although this one's pretty goddamn long. 
All right, what if? I kind of like this idea where we have another isolated string connecting to weaker zones. So I'm not insane, right? So in Illustrator, we got this path, and yet if I try to add a thing to the path, it won't work. But why? Okay, never mind, it just started working. But if I hadn't said anything, it wouldn't have worked, as long as we are aware of that. Okay, and also I figured out why stuff's looking different, because I turned on the wrong blending mode. Saved! Okay, we're good. Add a few more star systems here. Got to make the Incruza Hilda entrance more interesting. Something like that. No. Something like... Hmm, that's no good either, okay. I feel like I'm getting too obsessed with, with putting star systems on these little nebula... What, what was I calling them? Nebula... things? Maybe I gotta break up that pattern a bit. Yes! And something like so. Just to get a bit more variety going on here. Although I might as well just... Okay, I think... This might be good. When you look at this, does this seem like kind of a underexplored smuggling region full of pirates, or does this seem too crowded? Like, it's not that... Like, I don't know, the, the local cluster and the Dwanga Deeps actually seem a bit the same in terms of number of stars. Does that ruin the the vibe or do the the weaker strings kind of make up for it i think the weaker strings do and like maybe the solution is just to add like a bunch more like little clusters around here just to differentiate the i mean we got to do this anyway so maybe this isn't such a bad thing I think this works. I think I like this. I think I like this a lot. And you got these like big kind of open areas. It's a lot of, um, what do you call it? It's a lot of like holes. <laughs> Whereas what do we got over here? We got like a smaller one, big one, and then we got like the giant 
I don't know. I think this works. Aqualtium Questia, whose name I've never been able to pronounce correctly once, says, looks fine. So I guess that's uh, all I need. All right, well, let's start uh, Let's start naming these suckers. Uh, linked in chat uh, is that uh, Google Drive document we have um, with a bunch of uh, suggestions for names of independent star systems. I can bring it on the stream real quick here. Behold, all our names. So, if you want to uh, follow along here, uh, go in this list. Find me some names that fit the theme of the Duanga Deeps. We are looking mostly for... Well, in this section, we want um, names with some sort of tie to, to South America. Spanish, Portuguese names, that kind of thing. Over here, I think we can have a more of an, an eclectic assortment, because we have a groups of... Western pirates and Turkish pirates and whoever else going through here. So this can be a bit of a I don't know. What do we call it? <clears throat> Anything works So I'll try not to make this too boring But uh, this is the reality of world building where sometimes world building is doing interesting stuff and sometimes world building is reading a giant list of names looking for uh, looking for stuff that fits Dimensional Chaos, suggesting Port Royale or Tortuga. I, I I, want to. I want to so badly, but we got to resist the urge because I think it's too on the nose. And if a place is going to be named Tortuga, it probably wouldn't be a star system. It would probably be a space station. So the space station Tortuga is probably, uh, you know, over here somewhere. Okay, what do I got on my list here? If you'll forgive me while I just go through this. Um, ooh. All right, so one idea is that we had a bunch of folks from the sphere coming through here. Actually, no, wait, that's not going to work. Never mind. Thought I had a good name. Turns out I don't. Although whoever has been organizing this document and added the uh, the language, uh, you're the best. Thank you very much for doing that. It's making this a lot easier. Golden Bay, Magellan, Magellan, Magellan. Yes, Magellan. All right. Magellan. Where did they name that? Maybe there. What else do we got? I'm looking for uh, some Spanish names right now. Place of Wild Cats. Tehuntepec. Oh, Zonda, Zonda. Dry, hot wind of the Andes. Do I? Do we already have a Zonda? We might already have a Zonda. No Zonda. All right, Zonda it is. And again, for those of you uh, tuning in for the first time, none of this is really set in stone. It's just important maybe to get the names down, see what's kind of sticking, and then nothing is preventing us from coming back to this. In fact, we recently, if you'll forgive the tangent, I want to talk about something we did uh, between the two streams that I think worked out really well. So there was a problem where we had all these star systems, <clears throat> part of the, uh, the former Vega, that got split into two countries. So... We wanted all these stars to to sound like they kind of belong together and yet also have a distinction between the two sides. So there is a bunch of different suggestions on the document uh, here for what we could kind of use as our naming theme. Uh, some of the suggestions were, you know, ancient cities, uh, Arabic words for, for flame, gods of war, epic poetry, mythical ships, all, a bunch of different stuff. And I, I tried a lot of it. Nothing was really working. And then the idea hit me where it was... Um, 
I stole someone's idea. Instead of, um, yeah, it was gonna be, um, instead of Arabic words for flame fire, the idea was it was gonna be Arabic words for wind. And then that somehow just evolved into names of local winds. So every star system in the Vega kind of cluster here, named after a different wind that exists somewhere on the earth. And then their order is meant to kind of show the progression of these winds from east to west. So on this side, you have all the winds from the Middle East, Southeast Asia. And then as you get over here, you get more Western style winds. And then when they're all cut in half like this, it kind of works, I think, on a few different levels. Hopefully, am I rambling here? I guess what I'm trying to say is that, like, these star system names feel like they belong together. These star system feels names feel like they belong together. And then on top of that, all these star system names feel like they belong together. So that that is is that advice that might qualify as world building advice. Name stuff after wins and be deliberate in how you place them. I don't know. This isn't a uh, episode. I don't have to be on the ball. I can just ramble. And sorry, this is just looking weird to me. I gotta fix this. Is that gonna make things look better or worse? Yeah, that works. All right, more names for the deeps. I got, I get distracted. What can I? What can I say? Spanish for vanguard. Hmm. Gonzalo, Spanish, just surname, yeah. I feel like uh, a lot of the initial explorers going through this area weren't necessarily, you know, major corporations or governments who spent a lot of time figuring out what to name these star systems. I think it's entirely possible that some guy named Gonzalo was the first captain to make it out here. And he was like, fuck it, I'm naming this after myself. Dragon Master in chat saying, uh, Bruja, Brujala, Spanish for compass. I like that one too. And it's on the list here. Great minds think alike. So, how about that? Okay, but the names of the three triangle systems have got to be important, right? Gonzalo something and something. Gonzalo, I feel, sounds pretty cool. I need a more uh, Turkish slash, um, I don't know, ancient worlds ruin kind of sounding name for this one. And then a more standard Western name for this one. What's like a famous Roman ruin or, or like something along the lines of Byblos and, and all these places? Okay. Oh, this is kind of cool. There's a memorial gate in Turkey called the Three Gates. Unfortunately, the word in Turkish is a bit hard for me to pronounce, so I don't know if I want to do that one. Ooh, Turkish for thunderstorm is Al Bor that that's that's the uh that's the winner. Thunderstorm in Turkish. What a great name for a system. Al Barani. God, I hope that's accurate. Again, um in between streams we do <laughs> actually look over these words to make sure that no one's trying to pull one over on us, but uh, if Alborani is indeed the Turkish word for firestorm or for thunderstorm, that's a that's a good one. Okay. And our American slash Western one. I wouldn't mind something French, maybe. Or Perhaps whoever it was that first broke through this string was really into naming the star systems they discovered after old explorers. So maybe we got 
I mean, we already got Clark there. We got Magellan here. Let's do, um... Hit me with your best... With your best Age of Exploration Explorer. Uh, preferably someone who, like, you know, didn't slaughter native populations too much. I know this is Age of Discovery we're talking about here, so our, our choices might be limited in that regard. Drake after Francis Drake. Y yes. Okay, we'll just do regular Drake. Cook. Everyone's saying Cook, Drake, and Magellan. Y yeah, whoever discovered this cluster was, like, really into... <laughs> really into explorers. Cook, Drake, and Magellan. That's actually... That's a nice little, uh... Subcluster. Let's name that sucker, right? Um... Is this the Magellan subcluster? Yes, because that was like the first one they just, they they connected to. Perfect spelling is always there, Mark. Oh, and speaking of perfect spelling, this has been on my to-do list for goddamn forever. Cyclops, you son of a bitch! You're making me look like a fool. There it is, fixed. And Hudson? I saw that pop up in chat. I kind of like that one. And Sar Dude Bro the Second saying Sail from Robert de la Sale. Yeah, I like Sail. That sounds cool. And Bruselli saying, move the E from Cyclops to Cook. <laughs> All right. Is that, is that really it? Cook. Sam Cook. No, that's a American singer and songwriter. That is not the Explorer. All right, well, for now, Cook has an extra E. We'll see if that's true. Uh, Mikhail Lancaster saying Magellionis subcluster has a nice ring to it. Also helps uh, deviate it. Um, what's the... Is that just Magellan in Spanish? What is Magellionis? Or is that just like it sounds cool? Magellionis. Uh, so now chat's telling me there is no E in Cook. What a shame, because the comment, take the E off Cyclops and add it on Cook, was really, really funny. Ah, well, you can be funny or accurate, not both. Oh, God damn it! Aha! Aha! As God is my witness, Illustrator, you will not win this round. I am I am going to learn how to do the basic fundamental elements of this program, and nothing is going to stop me. <laughs> Look at that. You saw it here first, folks. Except that one didn't connect. Why aren't those connecting? Okay, well, I can only do so much right now. Okay, what else do we got? Uh, Jean Leffitt, a major pirate? Or Cartier? Oh, I like Cartier. When I was in uh, grade four, we had to do a project on a explorer of Canada. And uh, everyone got assigned a different explorer. And I got Champlain, which is uh, where the Champlain group comes from. Samuel de Champlain, turns out, bit of a bastard. Didn't learn about some aspects of his history in grade four, but what can you do? Uh, Perturber, Perturber is, is suggesting Leif Erikson. I, th I think if some other folks did too. I want to kind of save the uh, 
the Nordic explorers to another area. So we'll, we'll come back to that. And Tasman from Abel Tasman. I don't know Abel Tasman. Who uh, who are they? A Dutch seafarer. Sold. That is a good name. So I'm almost positive what happened is that a, like, maybe a slightly sketchy company was like, you know what? We're going to map out the Doanga Deeps. And, uh... They named these systems after, like, famous explorers. It's like a marketing thing, I bet. Like, we are continuing in the tradition of Magellan, Cook, Drake, Hudson, Cartier, Sail, Tasman, and the great explorer of Independent. Even though we're just trying to, like, you know, mine the deeps. I'm seeing suggestions for Blackbeard. Oh, uh, Juan Ponce de Leon. Yes, Ponce de Leon. Uh, how do you name anything after him? Do I call it Ponce de Leon, or do I call it Leon, or do I call him Ponce? Um, although this guy is probably a huge asshole too, right? I mean, you don't discover the new world and then be all cool about it. I guess it's just going to be called de Leon until someone in chat corrects me. Uh, Brasili saying, what about Sacagawea, the Native American woman who helped Lewis and Clark? Great suggestion, but uh, we got to save that um, for the Americas. So I don't know. I'll talk a bit about that just because you brought it up. But um, one thing we had in the original iteration of Dawn of Victory from a million years ago was a bunch of these um, separate Native American states. We had, uh, I think, the Iroquois were in there and um, like the Blackfoot Confederacy and, and all these tribes. But I feel like... You know, as an outsider who doesn't understand this stuff super well, there's a risk of portraying Native Americans as anti-American when, you know, I, I don't think that's true. So you don't want to portray this as if every Native American is just waiting for the chance to split off and do their own thing. So I feel like the solution is to have these, like, independent colonies that still exist under the structure of a larger kind of American state. I don't know, we're working on it, but it's something we're considering and all I can say right now is that I am not qualified to, to speak about it, but I am doing my best to find the people who are and do research. But uh, yeah, Native American representation, super important and interesting. And Daniel suggesting the name of Elenko, the guy who finished Magellan's expedition. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, Magellan... Oh, that should be the name of the end, right? That, that works so perfectly. Oh my god. Elenko. So you start at Magellan and you end at Elenko. I think that is actually pretty damn solid. Okay, and that just leaves what? Two more star systems that need names. So why is it that some subclusters have names and others don't? Like, should this also have a name? I think so. I mean, I've been pretty consistent, right? Like, these are pretty... I mean, that doesn't have a cluster name, but maybe it doesn't need one. And uh, Collect Panda asking, do we have access to our own solar system in this universe? Kinda, sorta, but not really. Uh, Sol is uh, right here. You will notice... There is no cosmic string uh, connecting it to anything. Not that it doesn't exist, rather it doesn't appear on this map because this map does not show every cosmic string. This sh uh, map shows like major routes that use cosmic strings and Sol is under quarantine, so can't go there, I'm afraid. And Sojourner suggesting Bonaventure, a French name meaning good fortune. I mean, great suggestion. But I, I'm stuck because I want to I want to save that for like the French frontier. Um, every nation in the OTO especially is going to have their own like version of the frontier, right? So you have uh, 
the folks from New California or whatever it's going to be called, kind of like expanding out in this direction. You have France coming up with their new new France. Britain going this way. And I guess America is maybe the only country that doesn't have its own frontier. But, you know, nothing's going to stop them. So they are heading this way into the far frontier. So yeah, my point is that uh, names like Bonaventure might be like better off for like areas around here. Like maybe that's the Bonaventure subcluster because it's a cool name. All right, let's go back to my list. What do we got here? Maybe something in Latin. Now, we're like continuing the tradition of, of single names, so what's a good name here? What am I missing? All right, most famous explorers. Columbus, Zhang He, John Cabot. Who is Zhang He, a Chinese mariner, explorer, diplomat, fleet admiral, and court eunuch during the early Ming Dynasty? Yeah, that is pretty cool. He sailed along the Southeast Asian... Yeah, okay. This guy has uh, has the credentials to have a star system named after him. Zheng He. And what about here? This one doesn't need to, in fact, shouldn't be named after an explorer because it's on a different string. So let's just go with a almost random one. Oh, Arcturus. We also need a Arcturus, right? Because Arcturus is, is too cool not to have on a space map. I think that's also a law. All right, how about... Malay slash Indonesian for chance slash opportunity. Would that make sense around here? And I'm not sure. For those of you, again, maybe not entirely familiar with the setting, different nationalities um, evacuated from Earth along different routes. So you can kind of tell who went where based on the naming convention of star systems. And there are exceptions, of course, especially when everyone is so multicultural, but... Uh, What about... Oh, maybe something Polish. We haven't had any Polish yet, and there's certainly Poles in, in the Americas, so... Well, I don't want to waste too much time on this, so let's put in a temporary one for now, and we'll see if it sticks. Uh, Wisla, the Polish name for the Vistula River. The string is kind of acting as a river transit route, so maybe that makes sense. If not, we'll come back to it later. But look at that. I think uh, they've all been named. And more importantly, I think I have found a pretty good compromise between spending time putting down star systems and wasting time looking through a bunch of names. So I think that worked out pretty well. Which uh, raises the question... Where do I go next? Well, you know what? Let's worry about that in a second. Let's uh, let's read some more comments and super chats. Okay, what do we got? Uh, mad props for using Murray Barton's Unity flag for Australasia. It's one of my favorites. Also, I put this in the Discord. But when do y'all think the UK or when do you when y'all do the UK? There should be some Canada representation. Yes. So again, for those of you unaware, let me try to actually bring this on screen here. If you go to the Donna Victory wiki, uh, we have an astropolitics page that includes all the nations that show up in this setting. And we've been slowly but surely uh, adding flags. So Commonwealth of Australasia, their flag looks like this, which the vexiologists among you might recognize as being heavily inspired by, where is it? Also, what is this? Uh... Bless the rains down in Africa? 
Yeah, what the hell is this? This is supposed to be like space synth. Uh, okay. Well, I don't know. This took a weird place, but uh, yeah. So the current uh, flag in Australasia for Dawn of Victory is based on this flag, which is, to my money, uh, the best proposal that's ever been put forward for what Australia's flag uh, should look like. Modified it slightly, just so we're not ripping them off entirely. I hope I hope this comes across as an homage and not a ripoff, but. Uh, my only potential concern is maybe there's not enough uh, New Zealand representation, but we had an idea about that. You will note that um, there's actually two capitals showing up for Australasia. So one idea perhaps was uh, that Australasia is like, I don't know, it has maybe potentially like two official na uh, national flags, two official capitals, one for New Zealand. I don't know, it's an idea. We'll see how it goes. All right, what do we got? Mechanized War Pig saying nothing. But hey, nevertheless, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, if you have a question that maybe didn't make it through, let me know in regular chat and I'll try to get to it. And No Stripe, thank you very much for the super chat saying, could a pirate faction be hiding on a rogue planet or near a black hole, maybe on a deep space station near a string? Would pirates risk kidnapping people for ransom could cause? Yes, so what you're describing is absolutely a thing and extremely prevalent in the new canon corridor. So you have like colonies that for whatever reason just didn't didn't didn't, uh, didn't prosper. So there's a bunch of, you know, slums and half-baked colonial governments on some of these worlds and they become havens for pirates kind of like Space Somalia. So when you have, you know, a big percentage of the Orion Arm shipping cutting through the new canon corridor or cutting through the Golden Horn or potentially other places on the map. Pirates, absolutely a thing. As for pirates like camped out around a black hole, don't say it won't happen because there's already some on the map. Like, what's that thing? Potentially a black hole. In fact, I know that Tim has added at least a few because I, I keep finding them. Uh, it's pretty awesome how many details are hidden in this map. Like, this, this thing was under the radar for me for a long time. Same with the uh, the Juno explosion, like whatever's going on over here. So, pretty, pretty cool. All right, JTSG, thank you for the super chat saying, Mark, you mentioned taking inspiration for the naval combat uh, being in the Cold War. Well, different countries have different doctrines of that, such as US forces focused on carriers while Soviets focused on missile spamming platforms. Yes, a thousand percent, uh, asking all the right questions. Uh, doctrine, shifts dramatically between nations. You know how in like, not to always rag on Star Wars, but uh, the Imperial Navy and the Rebel Alliance, once they're actually like fighting each other in a space battle, they use the exact same tactics, right? Like the Imperials have Star Destroyers. The Rebels have the M6, the MC, whatever the hell. Um, whereas in Dawn of Victory, that's still gonna be a thing. Um, you know, each nation is gonna be pretty comparable in the, in the naval forces they can bring to bear, but there's different priorities. So a Soviet Union, only recently getting into the interstellar expeditionary warfare game. Up until recently, they're mostly defensive. So a lot of their uh, carriers, you know, aren't carriers at all, but rather, what do they call them? Uh, heavy aviation carrying cruisers. Whereas the Americans have your traditional fleet carriers, escort carriers, destroyers, and all that stuff. So a thousand percent. Uh, still haven't figured out what German and Japanese doctrine is going to be like, but, you know, w with Japan, it's a pretty smart bet. Big battleships, lots of guns. I don't know, what would the designer of the Amato have built if he was alive in 1989? That's the question. Uh, but yes, 100%, uh, great point. And uh, how about the Magellan route instead of the Magellan subcluster if you're not certain on naming it a subcluster? Yeah, that could work. Sorry, just coughing there, but um, one idea that I had that I'm not entirely certain about, maybe you can let me know what you think, is I want to name like some of these runs or some of these uh, lines, just to give you like a quick, like shitty version, like, oops. You know, like do these names or do these like big strings possibly have nicknames attached to them? So going off that, like maybe the Magellan run is this. But for now, though, I'm going to stick to the subcluster just because uh, if we do decide to go that route, I'll need to put in some more work into 
figuring that out on Illustrator. So that's the thing. All right, now any non super chats I can get to. Uh, da, 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 da. Any, yeah, hit me with your questions. I'll, I'll keep the, the thing running for a second while I just kind of mess around the map. Oh, hey, look at that. Another super chat. What do we got? Mr. Blah. How big a role do you think starfighters play? Pretty big. Um, the role of starfighters is mostly just extending the range of your fleet, right? So if you have, um, you know, an electronic warfare craft midway through a system, they can feed back data to uh, the main fleet. So, yeah, in terms of like strike or in terms of starfighters, we want to make it a bit more modern era as opposed to just like World War II, where you have fleets of torpedo bombers heading back and forth. Not that you won't have fleets of torpedo bombers heading back and forth because the Battle of Midway was awesome and you want the space version of that, but there'll also be more, you know, electronic warfare stuff, uh, cruise missile carrying bombers, like all that rad shit. So, uh, starfighters play a big role, especially during uh, planetary invasions because uh, a lot of ships in Dawn of Victory can function in atmosphere. So every Soviet light cruiser, for example, is also a floating airfield something to consider all right now back to the regular chats am i missing anything um so joiner saying i'm so sorry but i'm the one who submitted kanoi in the systems list i've only recently learned that kanoi means cradle as a crib for infants i i, I know i i don't think that's a problem um kanoi like i i see kanoi kind of as a, a cradle for for lost explorers trying to make their way through the the corridor so Unless there is um, some sort of like uh, translation thing I am missing here and like calling this Kanoi is like totally inappropriate for some grammatical reason. I'm fine with it being named Cradle. I think that's fine. Uh, but let me know. Let me know. Let me know why that sucks as a name if it does. Uh, who walked on the moon in this continuity? That's a good question. Uh, a bunch of folks. Not sure. Uh, when are we getting the American Ranger Company video? So for those of you who uh, may not be familiar with this question, we announced recently that we're working with uh, Battle Order, the YouTube channel, and uh, Ian Gibney, the artist, to create basically a Ranger Company from scratch. Uh, the video for that, probably not until the end of the year. That is a, uh, I think we called it one of our major world building projects. So we're going to be working on the American, like, I don't think we've even started the American Rangers yet. We're still kind of focusing on, on each faction. So that is a big project. Going to take a while later in the year. Uh, as a Kiwi, I'm officially asking you to put the Southern Cross on the Australasia flag. It is a key cultural icon to us both. Yeah, I was, I was really tempted to do it. But the, the thinking, if I can bring up my, uh, no, I already closed it. The, the thinking was that maybe the Southern Cross lost its uh, meaning when you head out into, into space. I don't know. I, I'm not opposed to it. Maybe we'll bring it back. But I, I remember thinking I had a good explanation for why we we don't want it. But speaking of the Southern Cross, what do we think? Like coincidence? Or is the Southern Cross actually in the American Shy Halud Nebula this entire time? Saw someone point that out. Can't discount it entirely. Uh, Dimensional Chaos asking, uh, what spaceship type is used by this universe? Uh, if you're asking, like, in terms of, like, classes of spaceships, I would say it's closest to Halo. Yeah. Because in Star Trek, you have, um, it's like every faction has, like, their big, like, cruiser or whatever. Like, you know, the Klingons have the Vorcha, the Romulans have the, the Derodex. And then, like, maybe they get, like, one smaller one. You're, you're birds of prey. Federation, of course, is the exception, but uh, for the most part, like the Romulans only have like four or five ships. Uh, not so in Dawn of Victory, where, you know, the Soviets have light cruisers, they have medium cruisers, they got heavy cruisers, they got all three of those things, but from a generation previous that haven't been phased out of service yet. So there's a million different types of ships in every Navy just because it's a lot like real life in that way. And a lot like Halo that I think kind of has that element as well. And Josh Kiss, thanks for the super chat, saying, What is the current state of the Commonwealth and the British monarchy? Were any Commonwealth nations folded back into Britain? Yes, uh, Canada no longer exists in the DOV overs. It has been uh, absorbed back into the British Empire. The idea was, and again, this is still a major work in progress, that uh, during the first Synfaxi War, or rather in the aftermath of it, the British Empire kind of split into two. You got the, uh, I don't know, the, the western half, which is Canada, 
the uh, the Isles of Great Britain and I don't know the British Virgin Islands <laughs> that that side of the world becomes the United Kingdom and the other side of the world is consolidated under uh, Australasia so as for other nations in the Commonwealth possibly I mean it's it's possible that India is still part of the Commonwealth in some form uh, so I don't know great question one of those things we're still thinking about but the idea is that um, the British Empire went through a different kind of decolonization movement due to you know aliens showing up so I don't know it's probably a little different but maybe hopefully still a little the same okay and uh, you mentioned New California is that a group within the US or is it an independent member of the OTO so the idea is it's uh, it's kind of both where uh, let me try to Okay, so this is all heavily works in progress, right? But uh, you got the, you, oh man, I can't type or write. United America's name stolen from aliens, colonial marines and all that. America's, and the idea is like, this is like your, it's almost like the Soviet Union, but don't go too far with that. Uh, maybe it's more like the European Union where you have like the USA, you got the uh, the Pacific States of America that broke off during this Infaxi War, and then you have like your Native American nations, like the, uh, I'll, I'll just say the Iroquois for now, and maybe the, uh, the Black Foot. And they're all part of this like weird supranational entity recognizing their shared heritage, but the United States is also its own country. The PSA is also its own country. And maybe, like, these countries aren't fully sovereign, but, like, link into the United States somehow. So, the idea is that America is a little complex. Hey, but what else is new, right? So, I don't know. Hopefully, there's an answer there. But, uh, that's kind of the, the plan. And what else we got? Um, have you made any battleground systems that have, or between two nations that has multiple major strings connected to it? Possibly, we've gotten... So, one of the major plot points in the DOVOverse is that there are nine places in the Orion Arm where World War III is likely to start. Well, the top nine places, there's more than nine. And one of them is on Vega. So, Vega is an incredibly important star system, culturally, historically, strategically, it's incredibly important. We haven't added them yet, but there'll be more strings, like, linking to Vega, like this. And uh, we got the Soviet Union coming in from this side. We got the Germans coming in from this side. So Vega, one of the most dangerous places uh, in the Orion Arm. And I just painted all over my beautiful, beautiful tapestry. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, I've, I'm way behind on, on questions. My apologies. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, and uh, super chat from Aro Koda saying, "Why only slightly less than 300 years in the future? Kind of feels like too little time for this amount of colonization, even with exponential growth." Yes, great question. And also, is this touches on the next episode of the Way of World Building? Um, so a bit of a preview there, I guess. But uh, the the thinking there was, ah, no, this is like my, you know, heavily my opinion. I this is based in nothing. But I feel like after 2300, it just it becomes too uh, ridiculous to kind of guess what technology and society is going to look like. I mean, already, like the 2200s, the 2100s are going to be so completely alien to, to society as it exists today. But I feel like it's not totally under the realm of possibility that they'll be somewhat recognizable. But anything past 2300, I feel like it's just too weird. So that was kind of my, my thinking is we'll, we'll pick the the date first and work back from there as for exponential population growth in you know 200 years or whatever it is we've been working on it and we we think it's possible to get to the numbers we want to hit the idea is that um the human population in the orion arm is heading towards 100 billion and uh we got an explanation of why that happened but the basic idea is that cold war politics like won a victory over human demographics where you know, you have a generation like the baby boomers that retires and all of a sudden every government and company is saying, you know what, we got to make sure that every generation is bigger than the one previous because that's the only way to keep the economy going. So 
you know, fertility rises thanks to drugs in the water, or I don't know, government policies that that promote uh, big families. The point is, is that at some point, a policy was figured out that leads to exponential population growth, and it's not necessarily for for good reasons. Uh, this is, yeah, it, it's the human population has been turned into like a weird kind of resource or weapon or something. It's kind of the thinking there. So, I hope that qualifies as an answer. And sorry, can't pronounce your name. Neko, uh, somebody saying a hundred billion sounds small. I, I don't know. I think it's pretty good. There's a lot more people than a billion than you imagine. And I think the population of the Halo universe is like 60 billion or 40 billion, which makes no sense in the context of that's like 800 years in the future. So I don't know. I'm not going to say that any of these numbers are right or wrong. It's just kind of what we're going towards here. But all right, let's uh, let's get back to it, shall we? So we got half an hour left. What is something small that I could kind of work on that we can finish in 30 minutes? The Arcturus cluster is something we can do. Now, I don't know anything about Arcturus. I assume this is a real star that is 36.7 light years away. Okay, so I can get away with putting it a bit further away. Oh, Daniel Walker in chat with a very good point. Something I keep forgetting to remind people. Uh, they said, uh, remember, most of those planets aren't fully populated. They'll be primarily outposts. So, yes, yeah, so... Unless a star system has a symbol on it, uh, there is very likely no major nations there. We haven't fully updated it. Like, we will be adding more symbols to various star systems throughout the, uh, throughout the map here, but, like... Out of all these star systems, there's probably less than, you know, 10,000 people living permanently in the Dwanga Deeps. It's, uh, these are not fully developed nations or anything. Same with, like, the Dracona subcluster, Apollo subcluster, there may be some more people there. All right, but the Arcturus subcluster, let's do it. And the idea is... Let's put Arcturus like kind of in the middle of nowhere just to indicate that yes, there are stars out in the soup. They don't need to be connected to these cooler looking elements. They can just be kind of floating. So maybe somewhere around there. Arcturus. And uh, Commander Wolf and Chat asking, uh, what is the pixel count for that star map? Would have to be massive. Yeah, the pixel count for this is, uh, I mean, maybe I can, uh, okay, nobody look at the thumbnail that just showed up there. <clears throat> the pixel count is 20,480 by 10,240. Uh, it's so big that the map you see on map.champlain group uh, or dot champlain dot group is is not the full thing. We've actually had to crop some of it out. So that's how. Uh... I lost my train of thought, but I feel like it's fine. So Arcturus, what is going on over here? I mean, my primary thinking in terms of world building is uh, we need to add more smaller powers, especially to the... Uh, uh, especially in the local cluster. Like, this is where, you know, the evacuation effort kind of started, right? So not everyone made it to <clears throat> these giant clusters. Like, some people just got... Dropped off on Artemis, Apollo, Diadea, Sylvanus, Vesta, Juno, Tau Ceti, Sirius, Alpha Centauri, Arcturus, and Vega. Uh, and you have these little kind of kingdoms popping up, and Vega was the big one, but uh, not the only one. Okay, something like this, perhaps. Uh, 
And Brasili asking the uh, the big questions here. What's the character of Arcturus for names? That is a good question. Um, and, and I don't really have a great answer because the character for a lot of these nations like um, <clears throat> Sirius, Alpha Centauri, Tau Ceti, is that their character was kind of developed as they progressed, right? Like they were so multicultural that you can't really describe any of these systems or any of these countries as a single ethnicity. Like, what ethnicity is predominant in Alpha Centauri? All of them. Same with Sirius, Tau Ceti. So, Vega. So it, it makes naming them in extremely different. Or ex extremely different. Extremely difficult. Jeez. Okay, how about this? Something like so. Does that look too fake? It looks it looks a little uh, <laughs> like too perfect. I, I don't know what uh, we'd call that. Like too symmetrical, maybe. Yes. And then the question is, does it connect to Brazil? I am not sure. I kind of like the idea of Brazil being like a little isolated from the local cluster, because if Brazil can very easily send ships into here, then they would have exerted more of an influence like earlier in history. So like one of the only reasons that like Vega is able to attack Alpha Centauri early in the colonization era is because they know that no major power can stop them. But if uh, <clears throat> the Am although of course just because there's a string in the modern era doesn't mean that string was discovered uh, at the start of the colonization effort. So like there could be something there. Whoops, what am I doing? Let's just quickly fix that. All right, but hopefully my, my rambling made sense there. Like, just because there's a string there now doesn't mean there was a string there in the early days. In fact, I would say, like, the vast majority of strings on the map probably didn't exist during the uh, colonization effort when it would have looked more like this. You know, like... And that's the only string for a while. I like drawing on this map, it's fun. It makes me feel like I'm actually presenting something, <laughs> as opposed to just wasting everyone's time. Yes, this is working for me. Although, I think one thing to do is to add like a second cluster, like here. Why didn't that work? That should have worked. Illustrator, you bastard. Just work with me, please. I'm begging you. Stop making me look like a fool on live streams. Something like this, although I don't love the placement. Oh, look at this! Game changer! Unbelievable! That is huge. 
Okay, this is why I got to make stuff in Illustrator. Like, this is incredible. I mean, oh my god, I... Uh... Something like that. Yeah. And then... Arcturus also has a link going that way. Okay, so Arcturus names. What's something cool we can name the Arcturus cluster after? Come on, I, I can do this, right? I'll just type it out. Arcturus. I mean, what is Arcturus? It is... Okay, what's a star? I know that much. It comes from ancient Greek and means guardian of the bear. Watcher, guardian. Okay, so my initial thinking is like maybe guardian in different languages, kind of doing what we tried to do with Ve or Vega, but... Or potentially, are there any like... Is there anything associated with uh, Arcturus in mythology? Ursa Major Mythology. Ugh. Okay, I don't know anything about this. Whoa, Cosmic Hunt. The Cosmic Hunt is an old and wildly distributed family of cognate myths. They are stories about a large animal that is pursued by hunters, is wounded, and transformed into a constellation. That's pretty cool. Uh, not really helpful in trying to figure out names here, though. Ursa Major, yeah, okay. I, I have no, uh, I have no answer. I might need to think about this, uh, off-stream and figure out what these are gonna be called. And I'm seeing some, um, suggestions in chat there for Guardian in Latin, Guardian in Russian, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I gotta find, I gotta find my wind solution, whatever that is for, for Arcturus. We got it for Vega, don't know what it is for Arcturus. I mean, this is why naming stuff is so difficult when it's just a multicultural cluster with, with no ties to Earth, because really, like, there's no wrong answer, which means every answer feels wrong. Okay, but let's, uh, let's save this sucker. Scary Potato saying, how about names of famous hunters? That is a good one. Give me, okay, so famous hunters would be like Orion, which we, we've already kind of used for the whole the whole shebang here. What are some other famous hunters, especially from, yeah, we got uh, mostly Italians, Germans, uh, Central Europe, going through here, so we, we need those kind of names. Tim Barton saying Biden. Is Biden the name of, uh, and that's THE Tim Barton, by the way, hanging out in chat. Uh, is, uh, Biden a, uh, name of a hunter? Oh, I get it. God damn it. You got me. Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, shit. All right. Uh, Siegfried. Siegfried, Siegfried, is that the name of a hunter? Oh, uh, I see Siegfried in Middle High German, a legendary hero who killed a dragon. Yeah, that works. Uh, Daniel Walker saying, got him. Wait, no, is that a name or are you saying that Tim got me? I, I can't tell. I can't tell, damn it. Uh, Diana, Roman goddess of wild animals on the hunt. Great suggestion if we didn't already have our uh, Roman section here. Although, do we have a Diana? I don't actually know if we do. Uh, 
Although we already have such a strong, like, Greek kind of section, I don't want to, like, ruin it. Although, like, realistically, you would have some names that just, like, break the, the mold, right? Like, somebody gets in here, they call it Diana, they don't care that the Americans have, have worked out what they're calling this whole region. Uh, yeah, okay, let's, oh, let's add it in there for now. Maybe we remove it later. Diana. And then we name this one... Of... Themescura, potentially. And Woden is king of the wild hunt, according to Aracoda. And Alexandrian uh, Codex, who is uh, in charge of keeping track of map, na or map names, is saying that we have Artemis, who is the Greek equivalent of Diana. Yes! In fact, I think I remember this. I think... Um, didn't we used to have a Diana around here and then someone pointed out that it'd be much cleaner if we changed names around, so. I think it's acceptable for us to have that repeated. I don't think like, it's, it's one of those quote unquote mistakes or uh, what do you want to call it? A um, a repeat that, that feels kind of natural to me. All right, but we got uh, we got three more star systems here. These were probably tr like charted by a joint Brazilian Italian effort. So I don't know. What are your what are your uh, Brazilian Italian names? Is there any sort of link there? And Alexandrian Codex saying, just making sure that you knew. I mean, I had no idea. So <laughs> thank you. And, uh, right, well, while we're waiting for suggestions here, Bar to Kid, sorry for butchering your name there, saying, Hi, nice to see you live. Is there some version of Central Eastern Europe? Yes, there is. It is over here, and uh, we'll be getting to it, uh, eventually. We got a suggestion for pizza. I don't hate it. But realistically, pizza would be uh, in the Italian section of the uh, the map, so won't work there. Um, hmm. Sundered Throne saying, not really a hunter, but an Azzi, the spider trickster of Caribbean West African myth could be interesting. Yeah, that is a really good name. Um so good that I kind of want to use it as the basis of uh, a separate cluster. So keep uh, submit that to the, the name list if you haven't already, because that's a good one. <laughs> you know what? It's time to uh, to make some choices here. I can't just spend all stream figuring stuff out. So let's just start picking some names off the list here, and we will come back to these later. So let's do... Uh, what do we got on our long list of names? Um, Italian, 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 Italian. Some islands, okay. Named after an ancient city in Sicily, sure. Good enough for now. Catane. Derived from Latin flumen, Latin for river is fium. Interesting. Uh, maybe. Oh, Cassini. We we had a, a planet called Cassini in DOV Classic, I'm almost certain. So let's uh, bring that back. And one more. What do we got? Anything in chat? Uh, Serafina, Italian name meaning fiery angel. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Serafina. And again, uh, while I do trust you, we're not taking everyone's word on this, just on good faith here, so we will be looking into this, but... Serafina. A 13th century Italian saint. There's places named... Ser yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Okay, we got about uh, 10 minutes left, so as we wind down... 
I want to uh, put another question uh, towards the group here. Because we've made a choice and I can't tell if it's going to piss everyone off or not. I mean, it kind of pisses me off and I'm the one who did it. So uh, the idea here is that we want stars on this map to like more or less kind of align to where they are in real life with the uh, <clears throat> understanding that a bunch of like real life stars have been renamed over the course of exploration. And plus, this is an alternate history, so stars might not have the same international designation in this universe as they do in ours. So I bring this up because I really want Vega to be kind of far away. Like it needs to be on the outskirts of the local cluster as this like invading force that moved in. The problem is the real life Vega is actually like pretty close. And if we were trying to like put it on this map, real Vega would be like around there or something. And obviously we got some wiggle room because this map is not 3D, but uh, that was the thinking anyway. So one idea was, if you'll bear with me here, is that at some point uh, in the Dawn of Victory history, real Vega got named uh, Alpha Lyrae, I think, which is the, yeah, which is the, um, the alternate name for Vega. So Alpha Liri, also known as Old Vega, not technically the same star as this Vega, which like maybe this Vega was actually named after this star. So is that like an elegant solution to a problem? Or is that like your typical, this is stupid, the Temple Institute should make a video complaining about this? Um, I don't know. Because I like the name Vega, I want to keep it, and yet I want it to be kind of further out, so... I kind of like the idea that, like, Alpha Lyrae, also known as Old Vega, and then you got Fake Vega, also known as New Vega. Or New Vegas. Maybe this is a Fallout universe. We don't know. Could be anything. But, uh, you know what? I'm actually going to codify that, and we'll just see if anyone has a problem with it. Um... Yeah. Good enough for me, at least right now. Because, like, this is the kind of thing I would complain about if I was, like, reading this, uh... If I, if I was coming into this blind, I think I would be pissed off that, that Vega is so far away when Alpha Centauri, Wolf 359, Bernard Star, Tau Ceti, they're all kind of more or less where they should be. Uh, yeah. No Stripe saying, honestly, I don't care how close to real star systems your map is. Hell yeah, brother. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, <laughs> what we're hoping for. Okay. So, you know what? Let me just check in. Woo hoo hoo. Nobody look at that. Wait, never mind. That's just the fan lore section. Yeah. All right. So I think we're pretty close to, uh, to shutting down the stream here. I think this was a pretty solid session. Finished the Dwanga Deep, so that section is like pretty good. I, I feel like we'll probably come back to this and, and make a few minor adjustments, but I'm really liking the way this works. I think this is gonna facilitate the kind of stories we're hoping to tell in this section of the galaxy. Oh man, I don't know. Someone just recommended Kerrigan in chat. Jacob Mueller suggested Kerrigan. Yes, Kerrigan. We need more StarCraft references in this map, so let's add that real quick. All right, probably temporary placement, but uh, it's on there, so now we know. <clears throat> oh, I also forgot to uh, rename some of these uh, Pakistani star systems, uh, this name, or this, this stream, rather. Uh, recently, we had someone basically call out um, our name suggestions. My my original thinking was that we would have like the capital named after Islamabad. The I think it's like the federal district in Pakistan, and then we would have the other stars named after regions of Pakistan. And someone from Pakistan said, "Bullshit, Mark, you don't know what you're talking about." So they have given me a bunch of names for Pakistani and Indian star systems. So maybe we'll revisit this next stream now that we've run out of time. But uh, a lot of great suggestions for Pakistani star names in the Google Doc. 
All right, so uh, let's uh, just do any last questions before we uh, before we end things off here. What do we got? Uh, okay, um, Arakoda asking, what are the equivalent to nukes in this space Cold War setting? Probably nukes. I think, uh, I mean, okay, atomic weapons, definitely still on the docket because, uh, <laughs> excuse the phrasing, nuclear weapons are cool from a world building point of view. Obviously in real life they're horrific and we're all walking the goddamn nuclear tightrope, but uh, in, in terms of like, I don't know, space science fiction stuff, atomics are rad as hell. So I think that they're still like kind of the biggest thing. Of course, like way more powerful, accurate, expensive than current nukes. Uh, but what separates nukes in DOV from nukes in real life is that mutually assured destruction is not really a thing. And that's why a conventional war across the Orion arm is still very much possible. Because to get a nuke from the Sea of Clouds to the Soviet Union requires either, you know, a, a nuke with its own FTL drive, and it would need to go through all these star systems. And the way FTL works in the setting is it's like very detectable. When, when someone enters a system using an FTL jump, like you, you know they're there. It's hard to hide. So if they were to send a nuke to the Soviet Union, the Soviets would have like a, a ton of warning. Although realistically, if the Americans were going to try to nuke the Soviets, they wouldn't launch their, you know, ICBM or interstellar ballistic missile from the Sea of Clouds. They would probably launch it from here because uh, the OTO, you know, has bases and governments that are affiliated with, you know, all across the Orion Arm. Same with the common turn, same with the Axis. So when we get to dealing with geopolitics, that's going to be really fun because we'll be able to... <laughs> kind of figure out like you know what is the common turn presence in the local cluster what is the sphere presence i don't know okay but i'm getting ahead of myself sorry i get distracted so easily uh no stripe thanks for the super chat asking how common will immigration be in dov uh will some governments just ban it will it be a major issue in politics also just for fun will there be any silly conspiracy theories among the populace so two questions here and i got good answers to both of them well i think so anyways uh, immigration is like hugely popular and I think it's like pretty much stopped being an issue uh, in DOV. I, I mean, it's always going to be an issue to some people, I guess, but in, in terms of um, fear of immigrants, I think that's gone away simply because uh, the world got reshaped during the, the first Zenfaxi war when you had, you know, tens of millions of refugees uh, heading everywhere. So I think the stigma against immigration, if they're is one, I guess there is, is, is mostly gone in DOV. I mean, people are always going to be annoyed that, you know, foreigners are stealing their jobs or whatever, but for the most part, immigration, not this hot button issue that it is in our world. Arcturus sounds like a guy who would make a space monarchy. Not on my watch, Jacob Mueller. There's only a few space monarchies and they have to have existed before they went into space. Although I don't want to like put out any firm judgments. As soon as I say no new monarchies, I'm going to think of a cool idea or somebody else is going to think of a cool idea. So. All I can say is that monarchies are a hard sell. Uh, Aero Koda asking, gonna have wormholes would make good stories. Not sure. Uh, I'm not against it in principle. I just think that wormholes feel like they start drifting a bit too into uh, like sci, like not science fiction. Uh, I guess like Star Trek and Star Wars and like more fantastical science fiction. Whereas I don't think I want like crazy space anomalies, like even the more normal ones like wormholes to be super common. So I don't know, I probably not, but I don't want to say it's like off the table. Uh, do ships use kinetic energy guns or energy guns or regular energy guns? And Mark being the, wait, did I forget the second part of your question? I'm sorry, I did no stripe. Um, I'll get back to you in a second there, uh, uh, JTSG, but I just realized I forgot this thing. Okay, also just for fun. Will there be any silly space conspiracy theories among the populace? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, we already have started writing some, and not all of them are silly. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of thoughts on what's going on in the Cold War, what's going on with this in Faxi. So, yeah, this is a conspiracy theory-friendly setting. All right, sorry, back to you, uh, JSTG. Do ships use kinetic energy or energy guns? And being the SF geopolitics guy you are, how did you not watch Battle or Babylon 5 before now? Keep it the great work. Well, thank you very much. So uh, the first part is 
both. Um, ships in DOV use both kinetic energy missiles, torpedoes, railguns, coil guns. Uh, what am I forgetting? A bunch of bullets. Is That's the main stuff. Energy weapons are mostly used for shooting down drones and munitions and intercepting stuff of that nature. Uh, energy, like laser weapons, are a thing, but they're really only useful at close range. So most of the time when you're shooting a laser at an enemy ship, it's not to actually damage the ship, but rather you're using your, your high-powered laser to blind enemy sensors. So um, you try to target the enemy ship with lasers, knock out their sensors, and then... By the time that laser can actually do some damage, uh, your enemy is blind and much closer. So that, that's kind of the general thinking. Uh, I'm kind of anti-laser. I thought I thought lasers were unrealistic, and then the UK invented one. So I've had to kind of, you know, change my mind on some stuff here. Okay, uh, let's do a few more questions here. When will we be getting our first faction breakdown, and what are the plans in terms of the initial nat nation? So. In terms of the initial faction breakdown, it might be a little while because that's going to be like our first probably huge way of world building episode. So if you're not familiar, basically how this works is we put out an episode of the way of world building and then we have like an accompanying episode in DOV. So the first episode tells you like, here's how to create a cool faction. And the second episode is here's how we created a cool faction in DOV using all the stuff we talked about. and. If there's ever a video that the Templin Institute was like made to produce, it is designing your your world world building your factions. So I don't want to rush into that because I got so much to say. Uh, so soon, but not necessarily too soon. We got some higher level topics to to hit first. Okay, uh, what else? What else? Do else? Um, Will stateless nations finally have a home in the Orion Arm? Yes, uh, mostly because there is a lot more stateless nations in our timeline compared to real life. And as soon as you get access to, you know, 2000 star systems, everyone gets them. You know, there's no, there's plenty of land. So if there's a group of people who want to make their own nation, there's not a lot standing in their way, is the general thinking. And Nightmare asking a question right out of my own heart. How do flags work in space? I don't know. I'm working on it. I thought it might be cool if like, um, like uh, starships had like a holographic flag or something that they would like activate. Like you know when when Nelson was like raised the the colors or he put out what what did he do? He said something. He put out the um, the signal flags. You know, and every English England expects every whatever. The, everyone's gonna do their duty. We want kind of the similar thing to be a thing in DOV, but like. You can't make it look cool, right? Like, you can't just have, like, a bunch of holographic flags appearing from, like, a mast. Or I don't know. So I, I have no idea how to make it look good. There probably won't be flags in space. They'll probably just be painted on stuff. But uh, what can I do? All right. And uh, I think that's all the questions I got time for today. Sorry if I missed yours. Uh, a lot of them coming through. And I can only talk so much before the whole channel is destroyed. So that's where we're at. But let's save this. Let's bring back the old HUD. Let's make absolutely sure that Tim didn't send me an update on the map while I was talking here. Nope, we're still good. All right. <clears throat> so thank you all so much for joining me uh, here as we're building the Dawn of Victory star map. Uh, thinking we might be actually shifting the schedule from once every week to once every two weeks. I'm not sure about that. We'll see how people feel next week, but that's just one of the thinking or what we're thinking here. Uh, apart from that, uh, this stream was delayed from last week, and it's at an unusual time because I've had some health issues I've talked about a few times. Uh, the good news is that even though I've had a few rough days, especially on the weekend, uh, overall things are, have improved dramatically week over week, month over month. So uh, hopefully going to be getting back to our regular streams as well. Um, so might be on Twitch this Friday uh, streaming some games. Same with Saturday. So we'll see how that goes. So. Uh, until then, though, thank you all so much for being here. Thanks for the super chats, everyone who donated, and all the regular chats as well. Very much appreciated. Uh, I think we got a good community going on here. I think DOV is coming together in a good way. So thanks again, and uh, we'll catch you next time there, folks.